So if you guys remember right from the last couple of episodes, we actually bought this 2012 Jeep Liberty with 162,000 miles on it, paying all the money for it, $3,500, and it having an engine tick underneath growl, not only to mention that it looks a little bit plain. So we're gonna try to change this thing up, and I'm gonna tell you what happened when we went through to do this. As this Jeep sits inside the shop, we ended up having to remove the engine out of the other stinky Jeep, but this story has a silver lining, and we're gonna show you how we transformed this plain Jane Jeep into something worth probably right around 10,000 bucks. And I think we can probably get pretty close to it. Well, because I'm kind of ass backwards on the way I do things, I started taking everything apart on this thing, taping it down, cleaning it up, prepping it for paint work, and we've got a whole lot of red stuff that we're gonna paint and put on this Jeep. Whoa, what's up folks? This is Junk Drunk Crazy Clay here to tell you about the Jeep Redline that we just built. This thing turned out phenomenal. There definitely wasn't any wife people problems making this Jeep. She was a tremendous help. What I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you folks my thoughts and theories on not only purchasing vehicles, getting them ready for resale, changing them, giving something to somebody that's special, unique, hopefully lasts a long time. So check out the video. You folks are just gonna like the subtle things that we did. We didn't put too much. I don't think we overdid it. I think you'll love the end result. I believe within three days, we have a buyer for this thing. And, oh, 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 I almost forgot. I almost got scammed big time. So in this video, we're gonna show you that too. Oh crap, I'm forgetting things left and right. I found something super interesting about this Jeep while I was inspecting it. I'm gonna show you a little tidbit of it, but I have a super neat video where I did a pre-purchase inspection and I show you folks how to check all sorts of driveline things underneath these vehicles. I don't show you the common things like the oil and spark plugs and stuff. I mean, come on, that's a little bit redundant. But I'm going to go over some really neat checks that when you're going to buy your car next time, that you can just, with the jack, save yourself thousands of dollars or give yourself lots of buying power. So check down in the description for that video. It's like 16 minutes long, but it's super informative and it was done on this Jeep. So we needed to do a complete inspection on this. Everything from wheel bearings, tie rods, ball joint boots, tie rod boots. We also show you how to properly inspect them ball joints for movement. We definitely talk about how brake fluid just doesn't disappear, as well as showing you why brake calipers move out and how you can check them without removing the wheel. Axle boots, exhaust systems, transmission pans, rear main oil seals, output shaft seals, front differential seals, front engine seals, and something completely awesome that I found. Whoa, wait a second. Well, that's pretty cool. So this is freaking super, super sweet. I was looking underneath this thing and the guy had told me that he had had gaskets done, but he was super particular. Had all this documentation for everything all spelled out and typed up and stuff when I went to buy it but he wouldn't give me the stinking receipts for the head gaskets that he had done. Said they were only $780. I just assumed he was lying to me. Well, as you can see, come to find out he wasn't. That's kick ass. Not to mention that, I believe the engine was rebuilt in this. I don't think it was a rattle can rehab because the heads were a different color than the block. And I don't think the block would have still been black. I show you how to look for oil leaks and pressurize the cooling system. This is all neat stuff, folks. Oh my God, this thing looks so freaking kick ass. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens when we put a Clayway Jeep up that we bought for 3,500 bucks, make some video, and put it up for sale. So it's important anytime you're posting a car for sale that you put up very, very good pictures of the automobile. The reason you want good pictures is because you're representing that automobile. You clean the engine or you send it out for detail. It's all pretty simple stuff. This Jeep was in great condition when I purchased it. But you want to tell a story just like back when you were in school and you were taught. It's one of the very few things that I remember from being in school, which was to tell a story with who, what, where, when, why, and how. And as you can tell from my chain, I am ridiculous 
about the amount of information I put on a vehicle. But this does a couple different things. It tells people that you're serious about selling something. And if they take the time to read it, they're serious about purchasing it. Now, when you've got a vehicle that's got higher mileage on the body, you want to make sure that you put the mileage in by spelling it. Oftentimes in this ad, I will write things like, this is a two owner. It had 38,000 miles on it. Most people will scan an ad for mileage. Then down here, I mentioned that it has 140,000 miles on it when the engine was rebuilt. At least that's my assumption. I also explain to people that they can buy things from me with confidence because I've been around for a decade on YouTube. They can come back to me if they have a problem. We don't run a retail repair facility, but I certainly help folks that have purchased from me in the past. I just got a text message from a lady that didn't read my ad. She mentioned the 140,000 miles, and I explained to her that it had 162,000 miles on it. And the reason that I write these ads this way is because I want people to have intent to purchase. This is why I generally sell my vehicles to the first or second person that looks at them. Generally, if I sell it to a second person, they're usually, the first person is upset that they didn't buy it to begin with. So, you guys seen how the Jeep turned out? And I think it looks kick ass. Okay, so for show integrity, I have to point out that the reason the Jeep is priced at eight grand, I started it out at 9,000 on Saturday night. Sunday, there's a lot of traffic looking at Craigslist and Facebook and stuff like that. Not one call, not one question, except the scam, which was really interesting. Um, and I'm going to describe it because it just kind of ticked me off a little bit. I uh, got a text message from somebody who said, 2012 Jeep Liberty 4x4, nothing wrong. I'm interested in this. I'm like... Immediately, I text them back, and I'm like, whoa, you're interested in copying and pasting my top of my Craigslist ad and sending it to me? Hmm. I'm sure you're a bot, but I'll indulge you because my wife is telling me, hey, listen to what they have to say. So several moments go by. They say, you think I'm a bot, and then I talk to them. I spend talking to them for like an hour and a half. Before, they got down to the BS where they wanted me to give them uh, a Carfax report from some kind of weirdo, shady VIN number website. They said, we need you to go to vinsuchandsuch.com and input your VIN and we'll take that report. I was right. Pat was wrong. It was a scam. Well, I was pretty quick to thinking. I said, how about I just get you a Carfax report? And then they came back. No, it has to be a VIN such and such because blah, blah, blah. Scammers. So, I lowered the price down to about eight grand. Started getting all sorts of action. Now, I've got a guy from Minnesota that calls me up. And because he reads my ad and looks up my YouTube, he's like, hey, I want to buy that Jeep. I'll buy it right now. Blah, 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 blah. Well, today is Wednesday. You remember, right? Is it Tuesday? No, it's Tuesday. <laughs> Anyways, so guy calls me up, wants to buy it. I'm like, cool, uh, that's kind of strange. Then he tells me he's 77 years old. And I'm like, this guy sounds is, you know, I mean, I'm not young, but anyways. Uh, I didn't think he was that old. Would have never guessed that. But. What's going through the process of selling it to him right now, though, he wouldn't pay a deposit. He's had all day. I've gave him all sorts of documentation for him to pay this deposit. And I said to him, I said, hey, listen, I've been selling cars for a long time. And until I get some money, it's not real. Now, I've got a lady who wants to come over at the house at 730. It's uh, about 510. Wants to be there at 7. She says she has cash. She wants to buy it. Sorry for you, sir. Hopefully, Arnie, you're a nice fella. But I got to take the money that I can get. And you kind of broke me down just a little bit on the price. 
And I let him do that because I knew I was making money. We've had the Jeep for about two weeks. I put on at least a thousand miles on it. I've only put in a couple of hundred dollars into it. I mean, literally, I put in a lot of labor, but I didn't put in a lot of money. Did an oil change, changed some fluids in it. I mean, really super simple stuff. Put another set of tires on it because I had them on the other Jeep Liberty. It's going well. So, well, so stay tuned for the next episode. Let's see if we get any money out of this Jeep when we sell it. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you. God bless, folks. Have the best of days.